let's all stand to our feet and welcome Lindley Allen. Bless you, Lindley. Thank you, Jesus, for Lindley. Thank you, God, for the word of the Lord coming through her this morning. God, thank you for bringing her back to Canada for this week in a bit. And, and bless her husband and, and her little miracle daughter, Jordan, back home in Auckland. So, fire of God. Amen. Bless you. <laughs> oh, you're awesome. Good morning, everybody. Well, it's wonderful to be back here. And, you know, we were here last September. Stuart, myself, and our daughter, Jordan, for Catch the Fire conference last year, and then we stayed for the International Pastors Retreat, which was phenomenal, and, and uh, you know, we, we believe that this, and feel that this is our second home. So for those of you that don't know us in the room, I know that there's a quite a lot of new faces, and you know, we, <coughs> excuse me, um, we were here for nine years on the team, and we were directors of the School of Ministry for a season of time, and on the pastoral staff. So it was a really great season of our lives where we were completely changed from the inside out and born again, again, and again, and again, and again. And uh, as many of you of you know can probably testify on your own lives. So we, we do try, I'm gonna, are gonna try and get here very uh, regularly, but it's a very long way from New Zealand. <laughs> takes about 20 hours on the plane, so, but it's all worth it when we're here because it just feels like home. The word that I want to bring you this morning is something that's been sort of ruminating in my heart for about a month and a half, and it is a global word as well as a word for this house. And it is that there is an increase of prophecy being poured out on the planet. There is an increase of the Spirit of God bringing an increase of prophecy. And as we know that when the Spirit of God falls, people do all sorts of wild and wacky things. They get renewed, but they also, there's manifestations of that that happen. And one of it is that our spiritual being, our spiritual man awakens on a whole new level. When there's an increase of the presence of the Lord, there's an increase in our awareness of his presence. And there, there our gifts that he's been given us by the Holy Spirit come bursting a lot to life. There is fresh life coming to this house in the area of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy is one that is poured out in order to help, encourage, and to give life to the body of Christ. Also, we see, you know, with Veronique, you know, she's going to start to prophesy. Her girls are going to start to prophesy over those ones that have probably never, ever heard the voice of the Lord for themselves. And I've been deeply convicted recently, of course, you know, I flow in prophecy as so as many of people in this room. And I know that, the, you know, we, I used to oversee the prophetic ministry when we were here back in um, the early 2000s, that this house has a well of revelation. This house has a deep well of revelation, and you've honored the prophetic. There is more, though. You, we, you, we, you, if I can continue to say we and you, and when I say you, I mean we, are about to experience an outpouring of revelation like never before. When I, when I was meditating on the Lord and really praying for you guys this morning, I saw in the Spirit, the Spirit of God coming down. And I'm actually, I love that Mary Audrey's sitting in the front row. I, I just honor her for being a mother in the house, as I do honor <laughs> who has taught us to follow the ways of God, and especially in Revelation. She's so prophetic, and also Patricia and many others here who have continued to hold space for the presence of the Lord. You have, you have um, honored the prophetic. So I'm not at all saying that in any way that you have dishonored the prophetic. I am giving you a message today that you're about to have a love bomb hit you. And in that, each one of you will prophesy. Because when the Spirit of God comes upon a group of people, all will prophesy. It says in, um, obviously, when, in Acts, when the Spirit of God came at Pentecost, everybody prophesied. Joel prophesied that it, everybody would start to see visions and have dream dreams and, 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 and speak in tongues. And all of that just comes completely alive. 
When the presence of God is in our midst, the supernatural is in our midst. What is, in our, what is the supernatural? Anything that, doesn't, de, that defies the laws of natural. The supernatural is anything that defies the laws of the natural. And so naturally in our humanity, we don't, don't, can't hear the Lord, but it's our spirit man that does it. It's our spirit man engaging with the heart of the Father that we can prophesy. Everything is done by the Spirit. If you get an increase of the Spirit, you get an increase of the outpouring from your own life, the Spirit and spiritual things and supernatural things. And so I'm extremely excited because I love the prophetic. I love how much life it brings. I love how much hope a prophetic word will bring. I love how much destiny a prophetic word will bring. I love how much um, uh, just big vision you get when you get a vision from the Lord. And when someone, you know, just brings a word. I've seen words, simple words, change my life. You know, and I just really believe that there is, a, there is a new grace coming upon this house. So I'm just going to read a little bit to you here. I saw the whole room bursting forth and everybody starting to prophesy. It was like, and they're starting to declare the destiny over your life. It was like this outpouring of revelation upon your life where you were so moved by the Spirit to prophesy. I want to just speak peace to those of you that have never prophesied, but I want to encourage you that you will prophesy, that it is not a scary thing to prophesy. It is simply leaning your head on the chest of your heavenly Father and asking him what he wants to say. But there are times of breakthrough, and I think that we're in a breakthrough season. In July, my family was all over our house, there was about 16, 17 of them, and we were having a, a combined birthday celebration. And we were hosting the, um, the family. It was about five of us that were having a, a, our birthday celebrated on that night. And I was one of them. And there was a girl across, one of my nieces across the way. And she opened uh, her birthday card. And very, very clearly in vivid color, this birthday card on the front of it, I, to this day, I don't know whether it was actually, this was actually on the card or whether I just saw it on the card. But it said, it's not just a birthday. And then in capital letters, it's an upgrade. And I believe that August, this season, is, there is increase. Now, I've been talking to John and Patricia, and I've heard that, you know, since June, you've all felt an increase of the Spirit of God in this place. The tide is rising again. And I really want to confirm that word. The increase is coming. I was talking to someone during the week, and I feel like for this house that the tide has gone out as far as it's ever going to go out. And the tide has turned, and it's starting to come back in. And I, I want to confirm with what the, the leadership are feeling that there is a mighty wave coming, but it's not a cra I don't feel like it's a crash. I feel like it's the... Deeper, 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 deeper. It's going to rise around you. And with that is coming an incredible awakening again of the prophetic in this house. I really I really want to decree and, and, and release to you that this house will be known in the city for, if you want to hear God, you go to that house. If you want to hear God, I know the place you need to go because people, everyone in that house, everybody in that church knows how to hear the Lord. Everybody knows how to prophesy. And I love prophetic teams and I, you know, we've got a prophetic team in our church and all that, but it is time for the masses to prophesy. It is time for us to, you know, respectfully, and I'm speaking to myself let people be released and trained and equipped and are released to prophesy. Why? Because the person next to you needs encouragement. The person next to you may be somebody who hasn't heard the voice of the Lord for 10 years. Maybe they've been the back end of the desert. And I know what that feels like, to have a void of years where it, you, you have a very hard time hearing for yourself for various reasons and often it's a it's a it's a journey into the internal world of your heart 
<laughs> but sometimes crisis comes. Sometimes turmoil, turmoil, turmoil happens in your life. And you know it's really hard to hear the voice of the Lord when you're in turmoil. You know that when your soul is screaming, it's very hard to hear the voice of the Lord. He is still speaking, but it, sometimes it dulls our ears to hear. The, the scream of our heart is actually louder often than the voice of the Lord. Sometimes there are people that come to church I've just with, with us in, in Catch the Fire Auckland, we, my, we, um, we have prophetic stuff at the end of every meeting. We have ministry at every meeting because I want people to be ministered to. And I believe that, that, that we don't need to be scared of the, of the repeat people that need to come, that want to come, that keep coming. <laughs> they keep coming because they're desperate and we did pass to that. However, let's not stop prophesying because there's some people that are using it incorrectly. Do you know what I mean? And um, I really feel like there's been a, there's a strategy of the enemy that um, has tried to undermine the prophetic ministry and the, the word of the Lord. I was, um, let me just finish my story about my own church. I've just jumped subjects. Uh, in our church, I met a lady once and she'd come out of um, a traditional uh, church. And I'm not all, by all means saying that that traditional churches don't have prophetic training because they do, but this particular lady was so desperate. Her situation was so desperate, and you could see it written all over her face, and she just says, I don't know what God is saying. I don't know where my life is, and I've been in this situation for about five years, and I'm so desperate, and I heard. I heard that someone told me that someone told me that they got a prophetic word when they came to this church. And I'm like, oh, God, this is my job. This is my job. This is the piece of the kingdom that I carry. And as clinical as that sounds, it's our job to bring the word of the Lord to the desperate and the broken and the ones that are having a great time, but they need to just, you know, be re-envisioned. We are servants. The prophetic ministry is a servant ministry. I stood in front of her and I went, Lord... My heart of compassion is going towards her. Please allow me not to just feel her, but hear your voice. And I just started to just wait upon the Lord as we do. And whatever came out, and I can't even remember what it was now, but I, within three or four words, she fell to her knees. And she just had an encounter with God. And she hadn't heard the voice of the Lord for five years. You know what? We just need to take the time and take stock and go, you know, I think that we have to reevaluate our attitude towards the prophetic. And I'm just going to release something. I'm going to submit it to you, but I feel that there's been a global despising of the prophetic. There's, this enemy has done a little bit of a job where he's brought in an undermining spirit. I uh, was recently at a, um, this year, I was at a conference in New Zealand, and there was a very famous prophetic voice speaking. And this prophetic voice said, <clears throat> personal prophecy is the shallow end of the prophetic pool. And I just felt grieved that a mature prophetic voice would say that. Because that Naba gift, that gift of prophecy that 1 Corinthians 14 says that we are to eagerly desire, there's a reason why it says that we're to eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially if we would prophesy. Because we're, when we are in a world where life happens, when we are living our journey and we're you know, life happens, disaster happens, and destiny needs to happen. It's not all about when you're feeling, you know, sad. It's about what is next, Lord? How do we stay in step on time with you? We need a word from the Lord. And we are to encourage one another. Our, our, part, of, part of our ministry as spiritual people is to encourage one another and to eagerly desire to know how to encourage one another and to be able to operate in, this, in the gift of prophecy. And so I felt grieved, and I, I, I just felt like something came into that conference, and something sat upon the people, and I could hear the hearts of the people going, oh, so I'm just an immature prophetic person. 
And that was the fruit of that de declaration. I think we have to be really careful to realize that we are all mantled differently. I'm not Mary Audrey. I am really not Patricia, although she prophesies incredibly like me. We both operate in the gift and the ministry of the prayer. I, am, I don't look like her. We, we're sisters, but we're not the same. She has a call to intercession and prayer that I don't actually have at this point, not to say that I won't, I do intercede, but she has a passion where I have a different passion. We can all office op operate in different, get the same gift, but a different expression of the gift. And, uh, and, and, the other, and then I put two and two together when um, uh, the previous year I was in a, a meeting, it was actually a, a Sunday meeting, and a prophet was there to speak, and the prophet got up and said this, and I'm, I'm not bag bagging on these people, but I want you to understand the, the, the insidiousness of this, of this spirit. And this prophet got up and, and was beginning the message, and then he was starting to preach, and then he stopped, and he said, <laughs> bless him, Lord. Um, he said, stop it. And we're like, stop what? He said, stop crying out to me in your soul saying, pick me, pick me, prophesy over me. And it was like a whole wet blanket just came down. And he said, I'm not here to give you personal words. You go to God. I'm tired of... And he went on a rampage around, I'm tired of people drawing from me and trying to... Yeah. And that's, that was the same thing. I think there's two things that have gone on. And I'm just going to talk about that briefly, and then we're going to move on to brighter pastures, okay? <laughs> there has been... Let me get... I'm just going to read my notes so I get this right here. There has been, first, first Thessalonians 5.19, we all know it, do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, say test everything, say hold fast to what is good. To, qu to, to quench means to extinguish the fire doesn't it? You've got a fire burning in your house. You don't want your house to burn down. What do you do? You take out your little uh, red thing, fire extinguisher. You click the thing, go psh, and you put the fire out. You quench the fire, and the fire is no more. Despising means to least esteem. Despise is to least esteem. It, it means to set to naught, bring to nothing. And I feel like in those moments that I've just described, the prophetic gift was brought to naught. Um, but why, why, what would cause people of God to come to that point? If we have to ask ourselves, what has happened in the prophetic ministry that has brought these people to the point where they've said that. Well, I think the two things have gone on. I think, one, there's pr prophetic people that have judged Christians. The doorway is, ju is judgment, isn't it? We all know inner healing, first doorway is unforgiveness, second doorway is judgment. If we... Prophets have judged Christians for wanting and demanding and probably behaving incorrectly and without good character, and not graciously, and not mercifully. We've got, um, I've, you know, even in our church, we've had people come up to me and just say, I want a word. It wasn't even, good morning, Lindley, how are you? Um, I hope you're doing okay. Would it be all right if you inquired of the Lord for me? I'm just facing a situation where I just want some confirmation. It wasn't that. If someone comes and says that to me, I'm cool. But the person comes up and says, I want a word. It's just bad behavior. So I think that there has been some judgment from the prophetic ministry, from people who, who walk and who are seen as prophets and seen as prophetic ministers. There's been judgment. We've judged Christians. We've judged the body of Christ for being rude. And therefore, we now go speak to the hand. 
But also the flip side of that is I think Christians have judged the prophets for speaking and behaving ways that were was releasing words that weren't proven to be true for leading us down the garden path and, and maybe being presumptuous. I think one of the biggest things is when prophetic voices are presumptuous in what they say, that they speak before they've prayed about it, they've sp- spoken and declared things that haven't come true, and we sit there and go, wow, must be false prophet or working out of their soul or working out of a spirit of divination or, you know, and we've judged the prophetic. And I know that, you know, back in the Pentecostal movement being birthed in the early 1900s and the charismatic movement and the gifts of the Spirit were bubbling up. And back in the 80s when we were all learning, I'm now 51, so I can say back in the 80s, when we were all learning to uh, prophesy, it was awesome. It was so fun in the 90s. And, oh, man, it was really fun. We're all getting trained up in the prophetic. But we didn't know about the love of God. The, 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 for, in God's infinite wisdom, he poured out the gifts of the Spirit on us, and we were doing prophetic camps and training schools and all that kind of stuff, and every, it was all, you know, the gift was being elevated in the body of Christ, but we didn't have the love. We didn't have the wineskin for the pouring out, and it split, and it broke, and it hurt, and it wounded. But we're not back there anymore, Patricia. We are now, God has created this wineskin that is immersed in the anointing, that has been softened by the love of God, hearts and lives that have been molded and massaged by the presence and the love of God has caused us to be flexible and pliable and stretchable. And we are not the same people that we were 30 years ago. So we can let go of the 20-year-old mindsets. And we can stand in what God is doing now. We can let go of our judgment and say, well, yeah, maybe some, somebody actually did be very rude. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that we judge all the body of Christ. They put up a wall and then start telling people that they can't have a word or... The despising spirit has come to undermine, and the Scripture clearly says that do not, say do not, do not despise. What are we to do instead of despising? We are to test all things, judge all things. Okay, then we've judged it. So what does judging look like? We run through it, that line there. Awesome. Feel good about that. That's definitely scriptural. Heart of God. Next line. Not sure about that. Let's just put a little question mark beside that. Next paragraph. Was this, does this line up with, with the character and heart of God? And does this, is this speaking to my life? Or where does this fit? That looks good. Tick. Next line. That doesn't look quite so great. Not sure about that. Question mark. What does it then say? Hold fast to what we see is good. What do you do with the rest? Chuck it out. (laughs) We are responsible to be mature in the kingdom of God with the spiritual gifts. We We are to be mature in our attitude in dealing with spiritual gifts. We're not to just... Um, cut it off at the knees, okay? Um, the other thing that I've, I've heard people actually say to me, <laughs> well, tell me something I don't know, because all that you've just said is just told me stuff that I've already been told before. Well, I'm like, that is so incredibly encouraging to me. <laughs> but they have a frown on their face. Why is that? They're despising. They wanted to hear something new. There's a very good reason why God's told you that five times, sir. (laughs) You obviously haven't tested the previous words and prayed about it and actually done anything about it. But bless you anyway. This time, take action. Don't, you know, there, there was this accusation. Who, you know, you're not a very good prophet. You just told me something I already know. Tell me something I don't. Well, I'm just, tr- I'm just leading on the heart of the Father. I'm just telling you what I get. Sorry, man, if you don't like it. 
Uh, go back to the Word of God and test it and pray about it. Prophetic voices operating from an orphan heart have done a very a lot of damage, but we for, we need to forgive them because we actually aren't. We are operating a new covenant prophetic ministry where the Spirit of God is poured out on all flesh. And yes, we have to train and mature our own gift. We have to be responsible to train our own gift. Patricia is not responsible to train you in the prophetic, although she will. Right? <laughs> but, but your maturity walk is your responsibility. And so is the garden of your heart. And so we, we have to be, I know I'm preaching to the converted, but it's like, yeah, go to Sozo and get your heart sort of fine-tuned. Fine-tune your heart. Let go of the things that are making the, the, your heart uh, prophesy in presumption, which is anything up other than the true heart of God. I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And we're going to read this. So if we're not going to despise and judge, we're going to let all that go. We're going to let our 1980s mindsets go that, judge, that prophetic people are harsh and critical. And we're going to let people, we're going to let go of the attitudes of, the, of um, that, that have that really quenched the spirit flowing. And uh, that we have to make sure that everyone's perfect before they start prophesying. You know, one of the things that I used to love when we were uh, leaders of the school of ministry is that we would do uh, what we call the core value week, and we would do um, hearing the voice of God, communion of God, Father, heart of God, and then we'd get the healing life hurts going on, and then we would launch them into the prophetic. And people who had never prophesied before, we just laid hands on them, read, told them how to hear the voice of God really easily, how to get vision, little, little pictures, and how to lean into the Father's heart. And then we would just make them do it. And by golly, they came alive just like that. When you know and experience, know as in from an experiential knowing, that God can use you, can talk to you and use you to encourage somebody else, your life will completely change. It's not only life-giving to somebody else, but it's life-giving to me. But they weren't perfect. But God can use you anyway. Yeah, and, and we highly value cleaning up the heart, getting the, all that stuff. We highly, highly value it, absolutely. However, that does not stop you from prophesying. It says here, uh, the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13, right at the very end, it says this, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Follow the way of love. Say, follow the way of love. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially prophecy. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts. Love and spiritual gifts are in the same sentence. Once you fall in love with God, walk in the way of love, walk in his love, have his love fill you, be surrounded by love, operate out of love, operating out of love because love is a person as well as a, a way of being, you, you also eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially that of prophecy. It, we don't just stop at the love. We don't stop at just having a relationship with God. There's got to be outflow. And the spiritual gifts is your number one outflow. How can, what is he developing in you? What has he given you? What has he gotten you? What is, what is your inclination in the spiritual gifts realm? I remember um, waking up about a year ago, and remember the days where we would do spiritual gifts seminars? You know, find out what your spiritual gift is? No? Yes. And maybe, maybe, maybe you don't, but <laughs> in the 90s, I think it was, it was really, all the churches were going through, you know, do this, this survey and this questionnaire, and then you'd come out with, yeah, you're kind of more, uh, you have sort of word of wisdom going on, or you have prophecy going on, or you have a teaching gift or whatever. I think we need to revisit that. That revelation isn't old. 
but something inside me as a pastor is, feels like I would be going back 20 years. Do you know what I mean? But in actual fact, the Lord convicted me greatly and said, the spiritual gifts are for all people all the time, and they don't know what they, don't know what they carry. People need to know and be reminded of who God has created them to be. And I think that that is part of beginning to honor the prophetic again is to revisit these, these, these seminars and all these, maybe we can do it in a different way. But we, you need to know what your gift is so you can actually operate in it. <laughs> and as we, as we operate in it, then we're pleasing to the Lord. You know? Um, so in our journey with God, I, I think it's important not to just get into the realm of knowing the Trinity and experiencing them and having them love on you and change you and get you all healed up and you're having the encounter with the Father, but you've got to have the outflow. And your outflow will be through your spiritual gifts. And I tell you what, it is the most fun I have in the kingdom when I'm operating in my gifts. Because as the Spirit of God comes and talks and shows you and brings you revelation... You get so touched yourself. When you're ministering to other people, you get to experience God's heart for them. And it's really fun. It's nothing to be scared about. And it's as easy as pie. It's easy as making pie. You know, I think, the, especially at the moment, I buy pastry and just fill it. Yeah. Eating pie. Now, eating pie. It's as easy as eating pie. Even if you have dentures, you can eat pie. Because it's soft, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay, back on track. Um, the, oh, I've lost my train of thought. Holy Spirit. It's easy. It's meant to be easy. And it gives so much life to a body like this. Imagine somebody walking through the door and they meet a company of prophets. And they see that person coming and the Spirit of God falls upon those company of prophets. And they begin to prophesy. <laughs> Man. Imagine how that would, A, change the atmosphere, but also bring so much of the supernatural into that person's life. There's a company of prophets that are being raised up in a new order, and that is the way of love, that truly, truly know that it is the Father, that it truly, truly know that they are servants of the Lord when they minister, that the glory goes not to them, but to goes to the Father, but we are to bring we are to connect, as prophetic people, God's heart and heavenly atmosphere with the person in front of you. That is a privilege. That is the most beautiful thing, when you can bring a true word that can change a person's life in an instant. There is, that is just what I call the Holy Spirit buzz. You know, you get so much satisfaction out of seeing your life used by the, the Father in that way. I don't like, I wish I could come up with a better word than used because he doesn't use us. We offer ourselves to him for him to flow through. And uh, so do not hide your, your gift under a bushel, people. It's time to come out of hiding. Um, Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world, a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. <laughs> nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand that gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Proverbs eighteen sixteen says this, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before the great. One more scripture, 1 Peter 4, 10 to 11, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another 
as good stewards of God's varied grace. <laughs> whoever speaks as the one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as the one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that everything God may be glorified through our Christ, Jesus Christ, to bring him glory and dominion forever and ever. Romans 12, 6, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them of prophecy in proportion to our faith. God has given you a gift, and, and it's time to use it. It's time to use it. Our wineskins may need a little bit more oil. They may need a little bit more loving. They may need a little bit more tweaking. But we've been, this house and the people of this house and the movement of Catch the Fire have been steeped in the oil of his presence for 22 years. And I think we're ready to start pouring out. And I'm, I think we're ready for him to pour in the greater measure. Oh. I'm just going to take my earrings off. Oh. Oh. Lord, we want that greater measure. We want the greater measure. And you said that this is the upgrade. This is the season of upgrade. That the revelation, the spirit of revelation was being poured out. The spirit of God is being poured out. It's being poured out and we receive it. And we say, Lord, pour it into my wineskin. Pour it into the wineskin of this house. Pour it into the wineskin of this Catch the Fire movement in Jesus' name. Father, thank you that you've made our wineskins, woo, our mindsets and our beings pliable, and you have loved us to life. You have made us flexible. Lord, you have made us just completely immersed in your presence to be able to contain and stretch and expand our capacity to contain the greater measure. We just say yes to your greater measure right now. We say yes in Jesus' name. Woo, shakaramanda. Thank you, Lord. Wow. And Lord, we walk in the way of love, and we walk in love, in you, and in you, we move and live and have our being. We live in you, we move in you, and we have our being in you. Lord, grace us with a greater measure of revelation and help us to steward that. Lord, let this be a house in the city where, where people know that this is where God dwells, but they will also hear the mysteries of their heart from this house, that pe there are people in this house that are anointed to and gifted to hear your voice. Let this house be a house that people come to, knowing that they will hear the voice of the Lord. Let us not be ashamed to be, to, to be seen in the kingdom as a prophetic church. Wow. Thank you, Lord. I'm just going to invite you to stand right now. Woo. I know there's some of you in this house that were flying in the prophetic. But for some reason, life happens, children happen. You know, life happens and things just turn you in a different direction and you don't quite have the time or you don't quite have the the focus, but there are incredible jewels in this house that are underutilized in the prophetic. And I just call forth the Spirit of God right down on you now in Jesus' name, because today is a day where the light of God, the face of God is pouring out upon you, the Spirit of God is pouring out upon you. I want you to lift your hands right now to heaven, to His heart, and to say, Father, I'm sorry if I've judged prophetic people. <laughs> I repent of that. Lord, I'm really sorry for that. Lord, cleanse my life. Make me shiny. Make me clean. Lord, I'm sorry that as a prophetic person, I've judged the body of Christ. I repent of that. Make me clean. Forgive me and cleanse me. And cleanse my spiritual gifts from any defilement, any way that I've got dull hearing. 
Lord, any way that my seeing has been dulled and my hearing has been dulled, and any way that I have resisted the move of your spirit when you've moved upon me, Lord, forgive me for the times that I said no to you. Whew. And I just see a big open door happening in the spirit realm. Lord, we just agree with that big open door right now. We just agree, Lord, that you are opening the atmosphere over this house for the spirit of revelation to rest, to, for the spirit of revelation to rest in this house, to dwell in this house. Thank you, Lord. You know that Saul, when he was trying to go and get David and capture David, and, and he came into the atmosphere of, I'm not quite sure how to, to pronounce the name of the town, Naoth or something like that, and, and that's where Samuel was, and Samuel carried such an incredible anointing, and when they came into, when Saul came into the very presence of the prophets, the spirit of the Lord that was already on the prophets actually fell upon Saul, and he went from being, having evil in his heart to prophesying. Then the Spirit of the Lord comes down upon you. It is God who moves upon your life. It is God who moves you by the Spirit. And you can't help but prophesy. I pray right now, I ask Heavenly Father in your kindness and your mercy that that Spirit would come upon, that your Holy Spirit would come upon this house. Yes. That when people come into the zone of the members of this house, that they would meet someone who is anointed by the Spirit of God to prophesy. Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Trisha. I'm just going to hand it back to Patricia. What I'm seeing in the, when I woke up this morning out of my slumber, who here gets visions when they're just coming out of their sleep place? Yeah, isn't that amazing? Oh, it's so good. Often he's telling you what you need to be doing today. I saw fire tunnels, impartation tunnels, laying on of hands, activating the spirit of prophecy. So I'm going to hand it off, Patricia. Thank you for listening to me today. Yeah, just come on up, worship team. Come on up. Um, Thank you so much, Lindley. Uh, I really see my spirit just like a lid coming off. I think that there's a lid, been capping, yep. prophetic gifting, dreams, visions, all of that. So there's a lid coming off today. Could I just have uh, you guys come and help us, the uh, ministry team, the uh, cell group leaders, come on up here, and let's just do the two fire tunnels so we can lay hands on everybody. Um, Cell group leaders, ministry team, or pastoral team, and you guys know who you are. We just want you to come on up and help us. We're going to, yeah, pray this impartation, remove the lid, kickstart the gift, and um, I really, you know, I have so many people say to me, how can I grow in the prophetic? How can I grow in the prophetic? You know what I say to them? You do it, you do it, you do it again. Not necessarily give somebody a prophetic word, but I mean, listen to God, like the still small voice. We call it journaling. You know, have a journal. You, your Bible, you should always have your Bible, you should have your journal. Your journal where you're, even every morning, Father, what do you want to say to me? God, what do you have for me? Listen to that still small voice. Comes to you like a thought, comes to you subtly. And... Um, the judgment test, she mentioned it briefly, but does it align with the Bible? Does it align with the love nature of God? Does it align with his character, the fruit of the Spirit? We need two fire tunnels. Two fire tunnels, uh, preferably. Who graduated from the Revelation School this week? You're still hanging out. Oh, come on down here and help us. Come lay hands on people. You guys are full of fire. So Revelation School graduates... How about you guys form the second fire tunnel here? We had a week of just blitzing the whole prophetic gift this week. It was amazing. So, Lord, thank you for your presence, for your fire, for your glory. We start at this end and go down. What a fire tunnel is is just a prayer tunnel. It's kind of like a car wash, all right? You put your car through the wash, and you just get washed up and filled up. And... Uh, 
We encourage you not to stand. People behind you want you to keep going, so you just walk slowly. Walk slowly as we all lay hands on you, pray for you, ask God to impart an anointing to you, so walk slowly through it. Amen, but don't stop, okay? Because there are all these people waiting for you to get through. In the name of Jesus, let your fire fall. <laughs> Go ahead, start those fire tunnels. Let your river flow, let your fire come, God. Let there be impartation. Let there be a lid that comes off. Dreams, visions, God, impart it. Encounters, journaling, hearing the voice of God. Revelation. Let it flow in Jesus' name. My soul, come away. Yeah. Uh -huh.